Welcome in, proof of the expected value for geometric distribution. So if you take a look at the expected value for the geometric uh, distribution when you're starting off uh, studying this in probability, most likely probably in grade 12, you may not see this proof, but I think it's worthwhile to always take a look at some of the proofs so that you can get a gauge of where these things are coming from. So the expected value which you see there at the bottom, okay, so it is the summation of um, x, okay, so x is the, uh, the random variable that we would have, and then it is being multiplied by uh, p, which is the probability of success times 1 minus p um, to the x, all right? So within this, if we want to be able to prove, okay, and the proof would have to be that this is equal to 1 minus p all over p. So instead of doing the entire summation for the expected value, you can just simply use this very simple formula and find out what your answer is. And I'm interested in, okay, so how would we um, derive this? Now, there probably might be better ways of deriving uh, than the one that I'll present to you, but I think this should be sufficient and it also brings you back to the geometric series um, that you've studied in uh, grade 11. So for the summation of the geometric series, okay, which I have written out right there, so if you want to know what the sum of the first n terms are in the geometric series, where t1 is your first term, so you have kind of t1 plus t1 multiplied by r, um, plus t1 multiplied by r squared and so on. So you can see that this is a geometric um, series, okay, that just is being multiplied by r all the way throughout. Now, in our case, the r itself um, is going to turn out to be 1 minus p, which is going to be between 0 and 1. And therefore, therefore, we can do a summation, okay, to infinity, uh, because 1 minus p, okay, when it is less than um, uh, so when it's between zero and one, um, nicely falls apart and we know what the summation is. Okay, so you'll see that. Okay, um, so if you want to know the geometric series and where this comes from, because I also derived that in case you wanted to know, I'll put up a link up above there. That's in the grade 11 uh, series of videos that I did. Now, coming back to this, um, let's take a look at this and, and break it down. So why does the geometric, uh, uh, kind of the expected value for the geometric distribution is so simple, just as simply one minus P over P. Okay, so first of all, let me return back. And what I'm going to do is for the expected value, all right, so it is going between x uh, is equal to zero all the way up to infinity. I'm gonna change this around a little bit for our proof. Um, so for instance, at x is equal to zero, that first term is actually zero. So really we can start from x is equal to one. So that's gonna be one of the first things. And I'm not gonna go all the way up to infinity at first, okay? So I'm going to um, kind of mas massage it out and let that infinity come out a little bit later. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the following. So let me rewrite this whole thing. Um, first of all, I'm going to take out this P, all right? So if I take out the P, I'm going to have P uh, multiplied by, now I can take out the P because it has no influence, right? So I'm just factoring it out. Every single term will have a P, so I can just factor that out. So we have that. I've already said that I'm gonna be starting from x is equal to one because x is equal to zero just gives us zero for the first term. Okay, I'll still keep this at infinity for the moment. This is gonna be x multiplied by one minus p to the x um, like this. Okay, so that's gonna be the first thing. Now, uh, because I will wanna be able to use this geometric series, okay, so the summation for this, so I want to be able to use this at some point. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with this uh, thing. Now, I wish if that x was in there, then, you know, it would have been much easier for me to figure out because then I would have a geometric series, uh, which just goes all the way up to infinity. Now, but with that x in front, I have to do a little bit of uh, massaging in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this infinity 
And instead of going to infinity, I'm going to just go to n minus one. So I'm gonna take the first n minus one terms, right? Now, since I'm starting from one, going all the way up to n minus one, I don't have to worry about every single term. So this is a little bit of a trick in here, and I'm gonna call it, all right, so here, just for convenience, s n minus one. So those are gonna be the summation of the first n minus one terms, and that will be equal to, this P I will return to much, much later, okay? So you can keep that, okay, in check on the side. So I'm just interested in that summation for the moment. So if I do this, uh, what I'm going to get is, for X is equal to one, so it's gonna be one multiplied by one minus P, all right, to the one plus, so I'm doing the summation, so this X is equal to two, so it's gonna be two, one minus p to the two plus, you know, three, one minus p to the three plus, and of course we would continue this all the way. I'm gonna just for convenience in here, I'm gonna go all the way up to, and this is gonna be n minus two, all right? And this would have been one minus p to the n minus two. And then finally, I wish I had it fit on a whole line, but that's all right. So we have now n minus one, and then one minus p to the n minus one, all right? So this is the uh, summation of the first n minus one uh, terms that I would have. Now, what I'll do next is the same similar trick that is done actually in the geometric series. So if you've watched that video, which I pointed out in the beginning, you know, what I'll do here is next, I'm going to take and I'm going to subtract one minus P, all right, of the S N minus one. So I'm gonna multiply S N minus one times one minus P. And I'm going to be subtracting, okay, this from this entire thing. Now, if I multiply, okay, this by um, one minus P, okay, and then I'm, subtracting it throughout, so what will I, uh, what will I get, okay? So let me f not worry about the subtraction for the moment, let me just talk about multiplication by the one minus P. So if I multiply this by one minus P, then what I'm gonna uh, obtain is the following. I'm gonna get this term multiplied by one minus P, which is gonna give me one, one minus P, except now to the two, right, because I'm multiplying it by that. Then I'm gonna get, okay, um, the next term, which is gonna be this one, multiplied by one minus P, so it's gonna give me two, one minus P to the three. So now this will continue on, all right, all the way up to, okay, and then eventually, so what I'll have is N minus three, okay, and it's gonna be one minus P to the N minus two, Okay, and then finally, I will have, uh, this is going to be, I guess, n minus two, one minus p to the n minus one. And unfortunately, <clears throat> the last term would have been n minus one, one minus p to the n. Now, something uh, interesting will happen. If I now subtract, so this is what exactly what I wanted to do. If I subtract this, you know, Sn minus one minus this entire thing, which was multiplied by one minus P. So if I do this subtraction, so what you'll get is, you know, this term will stay as it is. So there will be nothing to it. So this is gonna be equal to just one, one minus P one, because that term is untouched. However, now this term minus this term, notice um, two minus one, because it's one minus P squared for both of them. So this is really just going to be now equal to plus one, one minus P to the two. And now if I do the same thing here, all right, and I subtract those two terms, then what I'm gonna get is I'm just gonna get again, one, one minus P, okay, this is to the three. And this will continue on all the way, okay, if you do these subtractions, 
that they're all going to be equal to 1. And what is interesting, this is going to be 1 minus p to the n minus 1, where the leading okay, thing is just a single 1, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, the unfortunate part is, um, you know, what is not um, canceling or, or doing any subtractions, but that's okay, is going to be that last term, which is n minus 1, 1 minus p to the n, because it doesn't have a, a partner to dance with. So that particular um, term is going to stick around. All right. Now, if I subtract, so if I take, maybe let me highlight this in a different way. If I take s and s n minus one, and then you know I subtracted all of this, well, this entire thing, okay, is going to give me. So if I take out the s n minus one, it's going to be one minus one minus p, okay, s n minus one, which really, so notice that this right here, one minus one is zero, and then um, the negative. Okay, and then this just becomes positive. So this is just P, S, N minus 1, right? So that's what I have up to this particular point. And now what I've highlighted there in red is uh, interesting because it almost, almost looks like this geometric series where T1 is just the number 1 and R is 1 minus P. So I'm just missing this first, this, this T1. I don't have a T1 there, right? But that's not a problem because what I can do is I can just say, okay, I'm going to add plus 1. So I'm going to take this term and I'm going to subtract a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm not changing that right-hand side. But with this 1, if it comes up in front here, right? So then what I will have... So I'll have all of this, I'm going to duplicate it, okay, and I'm going to have that 1, so it's going to be 1 plus, and now this whole thing is just the geometric series. So it's the summation of that geometric series where this is my T1, okay, and then this is my R, so this right here. And I know exactly what the answer for that is. So that is T1, which is 1. 1 minus um, r to the n all over 1 minus r. So I'm going to do that. So I have this entire thing now becomes 1 minus, my r is 1 minus p okay, to the n, divided by 1 minus 1 minus p. So that's, in, that's that entire thing. And now I still have this left, okay, and I have this minus 1 left right there. This 1 Okay, is that one right there. So let me add that to this. So this is going to be n minus 1, 1 minus p to the n, okay, minus just that 1 remaining. And all of this is equal to p, s, n minus 1. So you might say, oh, boy, you know, where are you going with all of this? Now, the idea was that we wanted to be able to find out Okay, not for the first uh, summation of the first n minus 1 terms, but we wanted this to go to infinity, right? Now, if you take this to infinity, well, something very nice happens is that number 1, this, okay, 1 minus p, okay, is between 0 and 1. And what happens when you let that n go to infinity? So you're just multiplying, right? continuously, okay, where the magnitude is less than 1 and greater than 0. So if you multiply it by itself infinite number of times, it just goes to 0 itself. The other beautiful thing that happens is that if you let n go to infinity, this also goes to 0. Now you might say, well, n is infinity, okay, so it's infinity minus 1, which is still infinity, and it's multiplying by 1 minus p to the infinity. So this, okay, right here goes to infinity, um, it goes to zero much faster, okay, and it takes out this entirely. This is just linear, right? N by itself is just linear, while one minus p to the n is exponential, 
right? But it's exponential between zero and one, so it's a decaying function, okay? If you would recall functions from grade 11. So it overpowers that linear function, okay? So this entire thing will go to zero. So now, so what we have is we have P, okay, where this is going to infinity, the summation. Now this thing is going to zero as that n goes to infinity. And you can, you know, you can, uh, you know, convince yourself if you don't believe me, right, for any exponential, um, you know, you can take whatever, let's say 0 0.5 to the n, make that go to infinity, you'll see that the multiplication of these just skyrockets to zero, all right? It can be any number that you like with a magnitude, okay, in uh, which is less than one. So what does this come out to? This is gonna be one all over, um, one minus the one and then the negative p there, so this is just p, right? This is minus one. So what we have, if we simplify this and we bring this um, uh, on the other side, this is gonna be that all of this is just one minus p all over p squared. Okay, so that is just, uh, Notice that the p, okay, you can put the same denominator, so this is gonna be one minus p over p, and when you divide by p, that's gonna become squared. So that's what we have there. So now going back to the initial thing is, we brought this p out, right, this one, and we found out what the summation of all of this is. So I have the summation of that, which is right here, but now, because of the fact that we had that p outside, we have to, you know, we have to multiply this by p. So this is no longer going to be squared. This is going to be 1 minus p over p, which is exactly the geometric distribution, the expected value for the geometric distribution. Um, so that's what we would have right there. And that is the proof. It's not the most elegant proof. Uh, but I like this one because it forces you back. It makes you recall geometric series, right? Um, and you can play around with this, okay, as much as you like, just so that you can kind of understand the first hints of these proofs. Most of the time, if you're doing a data management and probability course, teacher's not going to probably go through this. Maybe they won't even know how to do it. Um, some teachers may. But I find that it's very useful uh, if you ever continue on within maths, okay, and uh, get that concept of the proofs into your mind. So that is it, okay, for this video. I hope you found it useful. Give it a shot. You can put some comments at the bottom. Okay, bye everybody. Cheers.